hello kids how are you so here i got another very good question from pathfinder it's from the chapter gravitation so what does the question say that there are two asteroids each of mass m and radius r moving in free space at an instant when their velocity vectors are v1 and v2 respectively position vector of the second with respect to the first is r12 vector so determine the condition under which they will collide so this is basically a question of binary mass system what exactly is a binary mass system here you can see over here you can see there are two stars okay which are following elliptical path under mutual gravitational force and this is what the motion looks like okay so if i draw the orbit for the two stars so the orbit looks somewhat like this okay this is the orbit for both of them and both of the orbits are guys elliptical okay is that clear <clears throat> so under mutual gravitation right now they are following elliptical path and they are not colliding right but the question is asking what is the condition under which they will collide so we have to think of that now see uh, to analyze this problem we will have to go into relative motion okay we will have to take one of the stars as the reference and then look at the motion of the other star so for that first of all let's understand what is actually happening right so if i take the two stars like this this is my star 1 okay and this is my sorry this is my second star over here okay now see both the stars have got same mass let's write that over here mass is same now the if the distance between them is right now r correct then they are applying force on each other gravitational force how much is that force equal to that force is equal to f correct so value of f is how much g m square by r square this is the mutual force of gravitation between the two particles now i am taking one of the stars as the reference or one of the asteroids as given in the question as the reference then what will happen so when taking one asteroid as reference frame okay second asteroid experiences pseudo force guys second asteroid experiences pseudo force correct so we have to look that look at that pseudo force so for finding the pseudo force we need to look at the acceleration of the two asteroids correct so right now what is the acceleration of this asteroid over here so this has acceleration a and a is equal to how much f by m so that is gm by r square right So now, if I take this asteroid as the reference, then what will happen? So let me copy this system. Okay. So now, what will happen? This asteroid will have acceleration zero. Now this is fixed over here. Correct. This asteroid is now fixed. Okay. And its acceleration is zero. So I don't need to look at the force also acting on this asteroid. but about the second asteroid this will now experience a pseudo force so pseudo force will be how much so the pseudo force will be f pseudo that will be equal to mass of this asteroid into acceleration of this one a now acceleration is gm by r square so that is basically equal to again gm square by r square so that is also equal to f so with respect to this one asteroid the second asteroid is now experiencing double the gravitational force or basically what we have found we have found this pseudo gravitational force okay this is yeah uh, this is what now pseudo gravitational force okay one gravitational force is already acting over here and there's one more pseudo gravitational force gm square by r square So now, if you combine them, so what is the total force on the second asteroid? So again, now you will get the total force on the asteroid is equal to two F. Okay, so the net force is now what? Two G M square by 
r square now i have to use this force to study the motion of the second asteroid with respect to the first one so basically wherever okay so now in every formula of gravitation guys what you have to do instead of g use 2g because now the apparent gravitational force is having magnitude 2g m square by r square so instead of g m square by r square i'm using now 2g m square by r square so this is your effective gravitational constant because of the pseudo gravitational force clear so we use 2g everywhere that means your potential energy now will be how much potential energy is what minus g m1 m2 by r correct so instead of g now i should put 2g so that's it now rest everything is same okay so with respect to this asteroid the second asteroid will follow an elliptical path right now assuming there is no collision assuming there is no collision so the second asteroid will follow an elliptical path like this now let's jump to the question and see what is given to us so in the question both the asteroids have some velocities v1 vector and v2 vector we don't know their exact directions and their relative position vector is r12 vector so basically since we don't know the exact location of the asteroid 1 with respect to asteroid 2 so let's say that this is the asteroid 1 over here okay and right now let's just assume them to be point masses let's just assume them to be point masses and later on we will put their actual physical size into question so now su suppose that this is the orbit of the second asteroid with respect to the first asteroid and this first asteroid is fixed right and right now i'm assuming both of them to be point masses so this is your second asteroid over here okay and let me shift this on this side okay now with respect to one the second asteroid will have some velocity over here velocity of two with respect to one so let's write this as v12 vector and that is equal to what v2 vector minus v1 vector is that clear this is your relative velocity and joining them together this gives me the position vector r12 as given in the question position of two with respect to one now as the asteroid follows this entire path so what we see actually so it will follow this entire path on this ellipse with respect to the asteroid one and right now i'm assuming them to be point masses so that there is no collision involved so what is the minimum separation between the two over here this distance guys this is the minimum separation between the two between the center of masses of the two asteroids let's call this minimum separation as l okay l is what minimum distance between their center of mass okay so let's write down an equation to understand the value of this minimum separation so first of all we have to apply energy uh, sorry angular momentum conservation so step one apply angular momentum conservation okay so initial angular momentum is how much over here mass of the asteroid m is actually capital m times r12 vector cross v12 vector that's it right okay so this is your initial angular momentum and if i want to write the magnitude so i just put the mod value over here that's my magnitude of initial angular momentum and the final angular momentum at this point will be how much so let's say the velocity over here is v this is the relative velocity of asteroid 2 with respect to asteroid 1 at the minimum separation at the minimum distance so at this point both of them are perpendicular so the angular momentum will be simply m v l so from here i get v equal to what this is capital m so m will get cancelled out so i get v equal to r12 cross v12 divided by okay 
Now let's apply the second step. So second step is basically energy conservation. Okay. So what is energy conservation? Initial energy should be equal to final energy. Okay. So here energy is how much? Kinetic energy with respect to the asteroid one. Okay. Kinetic energy in relative motion will be how much? M by two times V one two square. Okay. And their potential energy will be how much? Minus g m square by r12. Correct. The distance between them is r12. But like I told you, because we have got pseudo gravitational force and the actual gravitational force. So when you combine them together, so my upper end gravitational force will have gravitational constant 2g. I have to replace 2g everywhere where there is a formula for g. Is that clear? So I'll be using 2g for pseudo gravitational force, right? And this is equal to how much? Now at this point, final kinetic energy will be how much? Again, capital M V square by 2 and minus 2g M square by the minimum distance L. Okay. Is that clear? Instead of g, I'm putting 2g over here. Instead of g, I'm putting 2g over here. Okay. So now major part of the question is solved. Now we just need to look at some comparisons and nothing else. So first of all, let's rearrange this formula. Okay. So what is V square by 2 equal to? So V square by 2 is equal to uh, M V12 square. Sorry, M will get cancelled out. So V12 square by 2 minus 2 G M square. And again, 1 M will cancel out divided by r12 plus 2gm by l this is my formula now okay now let's do something so first of all let's replace the value of v from the first equation that is v equal to r12 cross v12 by l right so what do we have over here r12 cross v12 whole square by 2 L square is equal to this entire function. Correct? So if the asteroid is following a safe elliptical path without any problem, this is my equation for energy conservation and everything is good. But if we come to the actual part of the problem, they are saying that the two asteroids have got some radius R. So when this Asteroid gets to the nearest point of the second asteroid. Now, if this distance L between them is less than a certain minimum value, then they will collide. How much is that minimum value? Let's see. So now let's draw the first asteroid and let's say it has got size this much. Okay, this is your first asteroid, which is a spherical shaped asteroid. Okay, let me. Reduce the radius a little. Okay. So this first asteroid has radius capital R, correct? Now, similarly, the second asteroid will have when it reaches this location. So this one has also radius capital R. And if you see right now, this uh, first asteroid as it follows this path, okay, as this first asteroid follows the entire elliptical path, it can cross this elliptical path without any problem okay it can cross the elliptical path without any problem because the minimum distance between the their centers the minimum distance between their centers is more than r plus r 2r so from here i can write down that if l is more than 2r there is no problem there will be no collision involved okay but if Sorry, just a second. If now, let's say the radius is a little larger, correct? Okay. So this one will also have a little more radius. Right. Now see. Now they can collide very easily. Okay. Uh, just a second. Let me rearrange this somewhat. 
Now see if L is just equal to 2R, if L is equal to 2R, then collision is just avoided. Okay. And if obviously now L is less than 2R, guys, if the minimum distance is less than 2R, then obviously before reaching this point, they will undergo collision. Simple. Okay. So there will be a collision for sure. Collision will occur. Is that correct? Now, let me bring the original equation that we have just derived. We derived this equation, right? Let me bring this equation over here. Now, this is the equation for minimum separation L. Okay. This is your normal elliptical orbit. And the question says what? The question says that the condition under which they will collide. So the question is assuming they are going to collide. The question is assuming that the two asteroids are going to collide. That means L is less than 2R. So what if we replace L over here with 2R? What will happen? So let me write down over here on replacing L with 2R, what will happen? So let's just copy the formula first. Okay. Now, obviously, they will not be equal on both the sides, but let's replace L over here. So here I got 2R whole square and here I got 2R. Now here the function has a positive sign, here also the function has a positive sign. So when replacing L with 2R, what will happen to this sign in between the two expressions? So here we have got the power 2 and here we have got only power 1. So the effect of replacing 2R will be more on this side as compared to this side. Okay, because here we've got a power 2 and we've got only power 1. So the effect of putting 2R is more on the left side as compared to right side. Okay, and on both the sides, this is in denominator. So obviously I'm putting something, I'm putting 2R which is more than L. So I'm increasing the value of the number or, or the variable over here. I'm increasing the value of L over here, increasing the value of L over here by replacing 2R. But since we got a square over here, so I can write down that this increases more and this is also increasing, but this is increasing lesser. Comparatively, there's a less increase on this side. And since this is in denominator, this is in denominator. So the overall function on the left decreases more okay now let me erase this part and the overall function on the right decreases but it is decreasing less as compared to the left okay on both the sides the functions are decreasing but since we have got a power 2 over here so this is decreasing more as compared to this so now obviously they will not be equal to each other but since this is decreasing more we will get a less than sign over here in between them we will get a less than sign now just rearrange the formula and you will got, get the answer you can match the answer with the book this is what exactly is given okay so let me just try that over here so r12 cross v12 whole square now this is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 and bring this two on the left so i'll get 16 r square is less than now v12 is what v1 minus v2 vector okay whole square by 4 minus or plus gm okay plus gm i take common and i get 1 by 2 r minus 1 by r 1 2 this becomes my final answer is that clear so that's it guys and uh, again like you all know i have got my own institute albatross academy so if any of you are uh, any of you are interested in uh, joining us for any of our programs you have got the details over here you can contact us on the website or on the phone number mentioned over here all right bye bye